Welcome to the video series of Azure Fundamentals. In this video, we are going to discuss about Azure Architectural Components. So stay tuned. One important benefit of the cloud is how geographically diverse the place in Microsoft Azure is. Now, there are currently 58 regions as on April 2020, when we are recording this video, where you can get computing services. In the following map, we can see that it's basically almost every continent, maybe except Antarctica, but you've got Canada, United States, Brazil, and so on. You have got lots of them in Europe. There are two new regions that has opened up in Africa, South Africa, North and South Africa, West. So you have got in UAE and also in India. So wherever you physically are in the world, chances are that Azure Computing Services is not too far away from you. Now, again, there are a lot of areas in the world that are underserved. You can see uh, large parts of Africa or large parts of uh, South America, Russia, well, uh, we had, they have been growing over there. Now, over the years, Microsoft keeps opening new ones, but this is, I think, by far even larger than the availability in numbers of regions that uh, AWS has. So Microsoft has the most number of regions in the world. What it represents are places where you can get one, of, one or more of those Azure services. So it's going to be where your users are and you want to put all those services as close uh, to your your users as possible. Now, the truth is that not all of these regions are available to everyone. For instance, uh, we can see that, you know, the US has a lot of government regions. Um, and if you see over here, they have also mentioned two of the Azure government secret regions locations are undisclosed. So there are some regions which are not available to everyone. So for example, there is Virginia and Texas, um, which is Department of Defense. So you're not going to have access to those unless you're involved with US government. Also um, in China, there you need to have a specific relationship with a Chinese company in order to get access to that. One thing that has been relatively uh, new within Microsoft environment is the concept of availability zones. Although Azure Web Services had, uh, has had this for a while. If we choose regions like uh, North Central US as an example, then basically the North Central US is actually consisting of multiple data centers. Uh, there are at least two data centers or more in that region that have got a little bit of geographical distance between them. So presumably if something was to happen, if there was a natural disaster for, of some sort, then chances are that one region would be good even if the other region is taken offline. So if I just expand this a little, then you will see that there are these diamond shapes over here, right? Over here, this and this, and in Japan as well, in Europe as well. So these are the availability zones. Uh, so these availability zones give you as a customer the ability to deploy your resources into those availability zones specifically. So if you're designing a system in East US and you want to have three web servers and you want those web servers to be distributed across different buildings for the maximum amount of availability, you can actually specify web server one goes to zone one and uh, web server two goes to zone two and web server three goes to zone three. However, the availability of these zones is not available in all the regions. So these are very specific, but it gives you the maximum amount of control in terms of where you want your web servers and other servers to get deployed. Now, one of the fundamental concepts uh, within Azure is that the concept of resource groups. So resource groups are basically a way of organizing resources. You know, you can consider them as folder structure. So following is a diagram uh, for an example. At the bottom, you will find that uh, we have resources such as uh, virtual machines, virtual networks, stable storage, SQL database, or some other types of resources. Now, now these things can be organized into resource groups. Similar to the way that the files are stored in folders, resource groups are basically a way of grouping these resources. Now you can even have multiple subscriptions uh, and so your resource groups themselves can be into specific subscriptions if you wanted to. And you can then also manage those subscriptions through a management group. So basically it allows you to not only logically group them, but then you can also group operations. So resource groups can have security elements 
elements and you can also restrict access to specific employees if you wanted to. Now, if you had any involvement with the Azure at all, you may have heard of the term Azure Resource Manager or ARM model of deployments. Now, this is relatively a new concept. I guess it has been out there for four or five years or maybe a little more than that. So before that, Microsoft used another thing called as Azure Service Manager model or ASM. So the Resource Manager model is relatively new. What that is, it's a common API that no matter how you interface with Azure, you're using the same API across all of them. So if you're using the portal or you're using the command line PowerShell CLI or you're using some kind of SDK, no matter how you are accessing the Azure, it's all goes through a common API, which means that you have common functionality among all of the different methods. Now this Azure Resource Manager then interprets those calls and basically passes on to those commands to the virtual machines, to the networks, to all of the other elements. So basically it is how you as a developer, operations manager, etc., interface with Azure. Now, there are many different benefits of using Azure Resource Manager model, and those include uh, the ability to deploy things as a group. So you can create multiple servers, multiple networks, and just put them as a package, deploy that all in one, you know, and you can repeatedly deploy these things. And so you have uh, what is called as ARM templates, uh, and that can allow you to deploy the same solutions every single time with no variance. So you can use these things in declarative templates, so ARM, that is Azure Resource Manager, basically enables you to interface with Azure in consistent way and provide you a bunch of different benefits.